Hello, this is Neil with Elk Castle Shooting Sports, and I want to talk to you a little bit about what makes a good elk cartridge. Now, if you're one of those lucky individuals who lives in somewhere like Idaho or Colorado, and the elk come frolic in your backyard, and they eat your begonias, um, you may be a big fan of using a 270 or 243 for shooting elk, because elk shooting for you may consist of walking out to get the morning paper, taking a sip of your latte, and popping him through the shoulders broadside at 40 yards. In that case, a 243 or 270 might work excellent for you. For the rest of us, we either pay a lot of money to go elk hunting or we just don't go elk hunting that often. And so the question you need to have in your mind is, when you see the world's largest elk quartering away over a ridge at 300 yards, do you have enough bullet to get through 400 pounds of guts? So, can you use a 243 or a 270 to kill elk? Absolutely. Have there been thousands of elk shot and killed with a 243 or a 270? Absolutely. Did Jerry Jones get a facelift? Absolutely, but that doesn't make it a good idea. So in my mind, the 243 and the 270, for those of us that don't elk hunt a lot, are not considered good for elk cartridges. When you get into elk cartridges, you want to start probably with the small medium bore, by which I mean about 7 millimeter, 28 caliber and up. Um, and really on the 7 millimeter, I would start with a 7 mag, whether that be a rim mag or a Weatherby mag, and go up from there because you're going to need the velocity to get the bullet out there, especially at longer ranges, and especially since you're going to be using a heavy bullet on an elk size animal. Uh, the 7 mag is a good cartridge. The uh, .30-06, obviously the venerable cartridge, has been around forever, killed everything on the continent. Um, with a .30-06, you do have the option to shoot 180 grain and 200 grain bullets. It's going to be better suited for medium game because it's not going to have the velocity with those bullets for medium ranges. You get into the 300 mag, now you're talking the same bullet out of a 30 out 6 just with an extra 150, 200 feet a second behind it, so it's better suited for longer range. And you're going to have the 200 grain, the 220 grain bullets, just as you would in a 30 out 6. Now, if you're going to buy a rifle that's going to be a dedicated elk rifle, or a dedicated big game rifle, something like a moose or an elk, and it's probably not ever going to be used for deer, you might consider the starting point to be something in about the 338 range. And I say that because a 338 Win Mag is a phenomenal cartridge. It's got plenty of velocity with a 250 grain bullet to reach out there, even in extended ranges, and anchor a big animal. The 35 Whalen is a terrific cartridge. It's basically a 30 out 6 case necked up to hold a 35 caliber bullet. It shoots a 250 grain bullet at reasonable velocities, probably not good for extended range, but it'll do just fine at short to medium ranges. You can always go up to something like a 375 H and H. The 375 H&H has killed everything from groundhogs to Cape Buffalo on the planet. There's nothing that has not been killed with a 375 H&H. &H. It's a terrific cartridge. It shoots a 270 to 300 grain bullet. It does it at reasonable velocities, even for extended ranges if you're comfortable and if you're a good shot. Ballistically, it's actually about like a 30 out 6 just with a much larger bullet. Another thing to consider when you're buying an elk rifle is recoil. You don't want to buy a gun that has so much, velocity, so much recoil that you're afraid to shoot it because missing an elk or badly wounding an elk with a big bullet will never be as good as shooting him with pinpoint accuracy with a good sized bullet, a smaller bullet. In my opinion, having shot things like a 300 Weatherby and a 375 H&H side by side on the range, the foot pounds of energy and recoil actually may not feel like what the, they show in the chart. Technically, a 300 mag has a lot less recoil than a 375 H&H, but it's a different type of recoil. The 300 is a much sharper recoil. The 375 is a big rolling push. It's actually more comfortable for me to shoot. The good thing to remember about buying an elk rifle is that unlike a chemistry exam, there's probably more than one right answer for the question. That means that you need to pick out whatever's going to work for you, taking into consideration the price of ammunition, the relative recoil, and what the final application of the gun is going to be. Is it going to be an elk only rifle? Is it going to be an elk rifle that you use for deer? Is it going to be a deer rifle that you use for elk? But we've got them all at Elk Castle Shooting Sports, so come by and check them out.